It's a paradox. It's like Victor Hugo, what he said is very true and relevant, that prosperity makes monsters and adversity makes men. Nevertheless, okay, nevertheless, the way it should be is not the way it is. And if it was the way it should be, God's will being the way it should be, we'd all be born prosperous. Because God is not the one that's withholding anything from anybody. God didn't create money. That's an invention. That's a concoction. That's, a, that's, a con that's been contrived. It's like sorcery. It's, uh, what do they call it uh, in sorcery when they, uh, they conjure it? It's been conjured up. Oh, what a great idea. Light bulb goes off, you know, thousands of years ago. What a great idea. Money. Yeah, what a concept. You know, oh, yeah, it uh, innocuously called uh, to facilitate exchange, we say. Okay, what a bunch of crap. Okay. So we have to start defining terms. When we talk about government, let's be very clear. Who are we talking about? Are we talking about the constitutional government, which is we, all of the people, not some of the people? Or are we talking about a bunch of bureaucrats and politicians that are, are creating the policies we all have to live under and they're exempt from? that they shove down our throats, okay? Making laws that don't make any sense. It's not based on ethics or morals or anything, but it's, be, it's by dictate. It's what they say, it's, it's the decree, right? They decree it to be the law, so you've got to follow it or else you lose your freedom. You'll go to jail at great expense to the taxpayers. $50,000 a year, over 50000 a year in California for one inmate for one year. So this is serious stuff, uh, very serious stuff. And they, the worst possible scenario for these evil people would be to just end desperate poverty. If you ended desperate poverty, you'd see mass unemployment, mass unemployment. Why would you see mass unemployment if you just ended desperate poverty? Because the vast majority of jobs depend on poverty to be relevant. And I've just explained that so many times. Okay, and I'll keep on explaining it. Every video I make, I'll explain it. And I'll explain supply and demand. And I'll explain progress relative to supply and demand. Your money increases in worth, okay? The only time it would not do that is when there was a temporary disruption in the supply chain. That's the only time. But for a long, 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 long time, we have been able to supply vastly more than what we need, than what we use, than what we demand, okay? And that goes for everything. That goes for all our energy needs, housing needs, food needs, clean water needs, and all the luxury items, trinkets and knickknacks that you can dream of, okay? All that stuff should have gotten cheaper, so your currency goes up in worth. That, my friends, is progress. Make no bones about it. Do not be confused. Do not be ignorant. Do not be in the dark about this. I know what the hell I'm talking about. And people got to start talking about this stuff. You got to, Alex Jones, man, you got to get guests on that'll talk about this stuff. I know I'm a nobody and you'll probably never invite me on your show. And I'm fine with that. I, I enjoy all the perks of being a nobody, believe me. And I don't, I don't ever care to see a penny from making these videos. This is my contribution to humanity. This is my service to God. This is a commission. This is something I must do. I feel compelled to do it, and I must do it. Financially, I'm not concerned. Like I've said before, I don't care about being rich or famous or any of that crap. Having a good woman would make me a hell of a lot happier than any of that crap. I know that deep down in my gut, I'm certain, because I can always pull a freaking rabbit out of the hat. Making a lot of money's not hard. I could tell you the stuff Rich, uh, Richard Kawasaki or K Kiyosaki, uh, the Rich Dad, I could tell you how to do it. Yeah, you can make a ton of money. Go out there and just be cutthroat, step on toes and say, I'm going to get mine, man. And you start buying forced sales and you get deals on real estate, housing, particularly that's the best markup on that. You could start doing Airbnbs, man. 
Okay, I saw a woman on the people's court and she's doing, she's buying up houses and she, all she does is she's a landlord to each room. She's running boarding houses all over the city now, making a fortune. She's the next rich dad, rich mom now, or rich single gal, whatever. Rich lesbian, I don't know. I don't, it's none of my business. But the point is, is that it's not hard. You can do it. You can do it, but you're part of the problem. You're not part of the solution. You see, I'm talking about being part of the solution. You can be a landlord and be a good person. If you're working to drive the prices down, if you're not saying, well, fair market price, this is the prevailing going market rate, when that's a bunch of bull. That's not true. That market has been manipulated to the nth degree. That's a matter of fact. That's what this whole banking bailout, they dumped all this money on the housing market knowing they were going to blow the pipes out of the economy. They didn't give a crap. They figured they'd profit. They say, look, we've socialized the debt. We're going to put it on the backs of the people through higher cost of housing. And we've privatized the profit. So we're going to rape the people for generations to come, okay, in perpetuity, they wish. They just like to keep increasing the national debt and blaming the poor people, saying it's their fault. Well, they need the welfare. Who's bringing the country into debt? Well, it's because they got to be on welfare. Who created the need for the welfare? Who created the poverty? These same people. It's like the people talking about the climate change. They're changing the climate and putting it on you and me, just the regular people that want to drive their car, heat and cool their house, whatever. And they're saying it's your fault that we're, the planet screwed up. We got to play God. We got to uh, call the population. We got to get you down to 500 million from the current seven plus billion. So it's that same mentality, the same thing with these money masters of misery. Okay, they're they've caused the problems. They create the poverty. They create the wealth and income disparity. And then they put it off on the poor. It's their fault. They're just lazy. They're drug addicts. They're drunks. They're all, they don't know Alan Greenspan blaming the opium. Uh, heroin problems, okay? He said, oh, this is what's going to bring us down. Well, these people are such liars. My God help them. I don't know. Maybe they're not liars. Maybe they really believe it. I'm not condemning anybody, but I'm going to be very discerning, very discriminating when it comes to pointing out the fact that their fruits are rotten and they stink to high heavens. They appear to be lying because it's hard, very, very, very hard to believe that they are that utterly stupid, Okay. I would like to talk to these people one-on-one. -on -one. You get me in a room one-on-one -on -one with Alan Greenspan, and one of us is not coming out probably alive. I'm just saying. And there's a lot of people like that, okay? And I don't know what's going to happen to me, but maybe something like what happened to Moses when he was overcome with righteous indignation, and he slew the slave driver, okay? That was mean to his slave. It was as simple as that. Something's going to happen because I don't take well to being told lies straight to my face when I know somebody knows better. They know the truth from the lies, but they're a deceiver. They're going to lie straight to my face and try to convince me that they're so smart and, they're so, and that they know what the hell they're talking about when everything they do is, is failure up for the people. It just creates the problems. It's just these people make me they're, they're unnerving. They're untenable. They're insufferable bunch okay that's what i see these people as evil writ large man demonic okay that's what they are and they're going to hell and my job as a christian is to reach out to alan greenspan and anybody else out there that is trying to tell me i don't know what the hell i'm talking about okay because i do i do i know what sound economic policy looks like i know why jfk was murdered okay and it was about money it was what guys like Jim Mars said, okay? He knew what the hell he was talking about. This is what's so controversial. This is what's an anathema. This is the antithesis of what they want is prosperity across the board, a rising tide of prosperity. They don't want capitalism to work, free market supply and demand capitalism, because they know what that'll bring. That'll bring absolute, utter, complete prosperity, and along with that comes freedom for everybody. So when we serve each other, it's because we damn well want to, of our own free will and volition, and nothing can stop us. Not because some a-holes hold it over and say, if you don't do this, you're going to be out on the street. You're not going to be able to pay the bills, okay? Then you're going to be out in the street, okay? It's not going to be like that anymore, and they know it. They know they're going to be rendered irrelevant, 
And that's what they don't want. So they are satanic because it is no less than the spirit of Satan that has overcome these people to believe that way and to be invested that wholly in that ugly, evil belief system. And uh, sooner or later, one way or another, God's will is going to be done. The good guy is going to win this thing. Otherwise, it'd be an unreadable book. It'd be an unwatchable movie. And uh, it's just the way it is. So I'm an optimist at the end of the day, but it's, it's going to be ugly for a while. It's going to be ugly because these people want us irreconcilably divided. And I'm saying we have to decide to be inextricably united. We've got a, all of us, everybody, left, right, center, re, send out all of branches. Be conciliatory to those you disagree with that you think are evil. You've got to reach out to them. You've got to get in a room alone with them and have a debate and say, are you for real? Do you really believe that? Or are you spewing deceit? Okay. Are you trying to confuse, discombobulate? And keep people dumbed down, ignorant, in the dark? Okay, I want to know. Look me in the eye. Look me deeply in the eye and tell me where you're coming from here. Because it's really hard for me to believe you're that utterly stupid, okay? It's really hard because that's the only th other thing I could believe is that you're an idiot, okay? But if you're evil, you're an idiot by default also. So much better to be an idiot than to be evil because you are an idiot for going to hell. And that's where you're going to go if you're a deceiver. So repent or perish. That's the message I have to anybody out there that would think to deceive innocent people, okay, that don't deserve to be deceived. All right? So just to sum it up, you know, we really need to focus on, on uh, communication skills like it's all these subjective terms I talk about really define it. Let's let's go. What do you government, uh, freedom, uh, progress, and so many other words? Whenever you have a discussion, you've got to make sure you're on the same page. You have a meeting of the minds about the precise definition of the word you're talking about to have an effective, effective communication. Okay, a, an effective conversation. And, um, you know, as far as solutions go, the solutions are plentiful and easy, okay? Natural market forces bring progress. If you allow the market forces to really work and people aren't colluding and fixing their price, just like all these cell phone carriers, they're all rigging their prices. They're bouncing them off. Oh, what's this guy charge? What's this guy charge? I need more of the market share now, so I'll lower my prices for a little while and get it, steal it from them, and, and then I'll raise my prices. Isn't this the way it works? We all know, the, like the Walmart thing, once they put mom and pop out of business, then they jack up their prices. This is what I mean about collusion and price fixing. They don't even have to, it's not like, hey, let's collude, let's do this thing. No, it's just they're doing it in your face, collusion. In your face, market manipulation. In your face, price rigging, price fixing. That's what it is, special interest groups. They say, I don't care, I can't worry about other people. I'm too busy worrying about myself, my family, my numbers. I gotta survive here. I can't worry about being the nice guy idiot and being compassionate and saying, you know, I'm going to compete. I'm going to be the best landlord in town and I'm going to start driving the prices down so it'll drive the worth of your currency up, okay? You understand how this thing works? So let's be very clear about progress and understand that it's not hard to fix these problems, but there's a whole lot of resistance to fixing the problems because a whole lot of people are going to be out of work in all these neo jobs and careers they're in that didn't exist so many years ago. We don't need them. We never had insurance companies. Go back 500 years ago. Where were insurance companies? It was a big scam. Nobody bought into. I'm not doing that. Screw you. You're just a middleman. Mooch. And somebody else, hey, yeah, I'll get in on that. Yeah, I think I could sell that and convince people it's a good idea. You understand? So all these neo jobs out there that won't exist anymore once reality kicks in and that reality is done by the hand of God and if any politicians if Donald Trump succeeds it's gonna be by the hand of God okay and the people just gotta come out of ignorance come out of Babylon come out of confusion and get basic simple economic principles understand what progress is relative to supply and demand free market capitalism your currency goes up in worth okay 
Until what? You tell me until what? You understand? Until you're utterly and completely free. Till we're all free. We're all so rich. We don't care about money anymore. We're too busy having fun, enjoying our lives, and doing whatever we want to serve in service to humanity, to give back, because we have an instinct to do so. So the system will not break down. I guarantee it. On my life, I guarantee it. I promise it. If everybody is prosperous and secure, the system won't break down. People will keep serving each other. Prove me wrong. You can't do it. So there are simple solutions, but they're constantly interfering with their subsidies and all this crap. I pointed out the Section 8 housing thing. That's supposed to help people that can't afford to pay their housing bills. Then why is how, uh, homelessness grown so much over the